is a tutorial on adding and subtracting radical expressions. When we add and subtract radical expressions, we can only add and subtract radical expressions that have like radicals. Like radicals are radical expressions with the same power and the same radicon. Or the root sign is to the same power and what's underneath the root is the same. So here we have three square roots of 15 and four square roots of 15. These are both square roots and what's underneath the square root or the radicon is 15 in both of them. So these are like radicals. Here we have three square roots of x and the square root of 2x. These are both square roots but here we have an x and here we have a 2x. So what's underneath the square root is different. So these are not like radicals. Next we have the square root of x and seven square roots of x. They're both square roots and they both have x's underneath the square roots. So these are like radicals. Next we have the square root of 23 and the cube root of 23. Well these have the same radicon or what's underneath the radical symbol is the same but this one is a square root and this one is a cubed root. So since the root powers are different these are not like radicals. So now that we know what like radicals are, let's talk about adding and subtracting radical expressions that have like radicals. Here we have three square roots of six plus one square root of six. They're both square roots. They both have a six underneath the square root. So these have like radicals and we want to add them. Well imagine that I said y was equal to the square root of six. And then I just substituted in y for the square root of six. This would be three y plus one y. Now if I wanted to add three y and one y, I would just add the coefficients. Three plus one is four, and they're both multiplied by y. Now if I substitute the square root of six back in for y, I end up with four square roots of six. So if you have like radicals, all you have to do is add the coefficients in front of your radical expressions. So three square roots of six plus one square root of six is four square roots of six. There's another way to think of this. Here we have four square roots of x plus seven square roots of x. Imagine that I factored out a greatest common factor from both of these of square root of x. We'd have square root of x times four plus seven. Now four plus seven is 11, so this is 11 times the square root of x, or if we just add our coefficients, four and seven, we'll have 11 square roots of x. Now subtraction works the same way. Here we have two square roots of 15 minus the square root of 15. You can think of this as one square roots of 15, and just like adding, Subtracting works the same way, we just subtract the coefficients. So two minus one is one, and then carry along your square root of 15, and two square roots of 15 minus square root of 15 is just the square root of 15. Here we have 10 square root of two y minus 15 square roots of two y. Imagine you factor out the square root of two y you'd be left with 10 minus 15, all multiplied by the square root of 2y. 10 minus 15 is minus five, and that's multiplied by the square root of 2y. So 10 square roots of 2y minus 15 square roots of 2y is a negative five square root of 2y. Again, you just subtract the coefficients in front of your radical term. So what happens when we try to add and subtract radical expressions that don't have like radicals? Here we have four square roots of 28 plus two square roots of seven. Well, if we're gonna add these, we're gonna have to simplify them so we can get like radicals. This four square roots of 28, well, 28 I can break down into four and seven. So this is four times the square root of four times seven. 
And if I write it that way, I can also write it as 4 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 7. And we're still adding two square roots of 7. So here now, I have some like radicals. I have a square root of 7 and a square root of 7. If I factor out my square root of 7, I'll have square root of 7 times 4 square roots of 4 plus 2. Now the square root of 4, this is 2, so I have 4 times 2 plus 2. 4 times 2 is 8 plus 2 is 10. And I end up with 10 square roots of 7. So to add these, I have to simplify one of them so I end up with the same like radical. Let's try our next example. Here we have 10 square root of 5x plus 12 square root of 10x. Well, this second term here, this 12 square root of 10x, I can think of this 10x as the square root of 2 times 5 times x. And if I do that, I can think of that as the square root of 2 times the square root of 5x. Now, I have like radicals. This is 10 square root of 5x plus 12 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 5x. If I factor out my square root of 5x, I'll have 10 plus 12 square roots of 2. Now this is our solution. If you want to, you can convert this square root of 2, or 12 square roots of 2. This is equal to approximately 16.97. Add 10 to that, and you'll have 26.97. And this is still multiplied by the square root of 5x. Now when we subtract radical expressions with different radicals, the same rules apply for when we add. We need to simplify our radicals so we get some like radicals. Here I have 17 times the square root of 50 minus 14 times the square root of 32. Now looking at my square root of 50, I can break this into 2 and 25. So this is 17 times the square root of 2 times 25. I can also write this as 17 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 25. The square root of 25 is just 5. 5 times 17 is 85. So we have 85 square roots of 2. Now looking at the 32 under our square root in our second term here, 32 I can break up into 2 and 16. So this is subtracting 14 times the square root of 2 times 16. Or subtracting 14 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 16. The square root of 16 is 4. 4 times 14 is 56. So we're subtracting 56 square roots of 2. Notice here now we have like radicals of the square root of 2. 85 minus 56 is 29. So we end up with 29 square roots of 2. Now let's look at our next example. Here we have x squared times the square root of 8y minus 7x times the square root of 18y cubed. Well, let's first try to simplify our first term here. We have x squared times the square root of 8y. This 8 I can break into 4 times 2, and then of course it's still times y. This 4 is a perfect square, so I'm going to take it out, or I'm going to make this x squared times the square root of 4 times the square root of 2y. The square root of 4 is just 2, so this is 2x squared times the square root of 2y. So I've simplified my first term here as far as I can go. Now let's try simplifying our second term. 
we have a 7x times the square root of 18y cubed. Well, the 7x comes along. The square root of 18y cubed. Well, 18 I can break into 2 and 9. And y cubed I can break into y squared times y. Well, 9 is a perfect square, and so is y squared. So I'm going to turn this into 7x times the square root of 9 times the square root of y squared times the square root of 2y. Now the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of y squared, providing that y is positive, is just y. And the square root of 2y I can't simplify any further. So this is just times the square root of 2y. It's also still times 7x. 7x times 3 is 21x. And then times y, we're going to have minus 21xy. And then still times the square root of 2y. Notice here we have like radicals now. It's the square root of 2y. If I factor out my square root of 2y, what I have left is 2x squared minus 21xy. And this is our simplified solution. And that completes the tutorial on adding and subtracting radical expressions.